Yeah, so like I was saying, I was taken onto this project by Liz, so thank you wherever you are in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you flip through your packet, you'll see my page, Parasol Experiment 4A. Um, yeah, so my experiment is basically testing the viability of pruning trees as a way to control the pest insect Paracilla. Um, Paracilla, if you don't know, is just a small flying insect that's attracted to the soft vegetation on trees. They like feeding on the fruitlets and like the soft vertical sprouts you see here. And that's also where they lay their eggs when they're breeding. Um, so basically, we hypothesize that if you remove what they're attracted to, they won't come around anymore. Um, so we designed the experiment where we have 24 trees here at Cold Spring, and then we're also doing a replicate at Fishista Orchard. And we divided it up into blocks of four trees each. And then we have either one-fourth, one-third, three-fourths, or none of the vertical sprouts removed, so pruning out of the tree. And we don't do cutting, we pull it off with our hands. Um, and then after that, we set up some clear sticky traps and visually inspect the trees for the population. Yeah, so after that, we're also concerned about increasing the risk of fire blight by pruning so much on the trees, which we've been looking at. We just visually inspect them throughout the season. And then we're also looking at um, if it'll be an economically viable option, you know, like man hours working, pruning the trees with how many people, and seeing if that's like a financially, like financially stable option. So if you look in your packet, we have um, a graph of some of the results we've had so far. Um, this is from our first sampling date on the trees here at Cold Spring. It's all the trees combined. And you can kind of see the results are looking good. Um, for three-fourths of the water sprouts removed, the number of eggs that are on the vertical shoots is a lot less. And then for the control, we removed none of the water sprouts there's a lot more. So we haven't finished collecting data and we'll finish in August, but I think it's looking like it'll be a good result. Yeah, any questions? All right, hello everyone. My name is Mateo Rul. I'm a very recent hire. I started working at UMass Extension two months ago under the mentorship of Jaime Pinero. Uh, I am kind of at a double appointment right now working with the uh, uh, research and extension experience for undergraduates project, which you will hear about shortly but also working in independent research projects, uh, among them the one that I'm going to tell you a little bit about. So uh, for the past month and a half, I've been going to uh, several farms. Some of you already recognize me, and I've been laying some uh, stink bug eggs that are completely dead, not to worry. If you turn the page to 4B, you'll be able to see some cool pictures. So brown marmorated stink bug has been around in the States for a while. It was introduced in the 1990s, Pennsylvania, we think. Of course, it's an invasive species from Asia, and that lack of local natural enemies has allowed it to spread pretty precipitously across almost 47 states, among them Massachusetts. In its native range in Asia, it's pretty well controlled by this parasitoid wasp called the samurai wasp. But it is kind of unknown if it's present in Massachusetts. Uh, we know that it's present in some other states. I think around 13 is the count right now. And the cool thing about this wasp is uh, it does not sting humans. It's around half a millimeter big. So it's very hard to see with your naked eye. Uh, but I do have a picture over there uh, in, at the bottom right. And you can see um, an unidentified uh, species that is probably in the same family as a samurai wasp. Now, uh, the way that the samurai wasp is able to control almost 80% of all uh, new sting bug uh, larvae from coming out of those eggs is that as part of its life cycle the samurai wasp injects its own eggs into the developing stink bug eggs so it takes a little longer for them to hatch but instead of seeing a stink bug uh, nymph coming out of the egg you're going to see a developed fully adult wasp that is ready to reproduce and is ready to uh, inject its eggs oviposit other stink bug eggs so that's really cool uh, it's 
it would be ideal if we could use it as a, what we call biological control agent as part of IPM. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar, but essentially using natural enemies of pests to deal with the pest instead of using alternative methods. And so uh, current efforts as part of UMass Extension, we aim to monitor uh, the presence of this wasp in Massachusetts. And the way that I do this is, is fairly simple. Uh, I get fresh sting bug eggs. I inoculate them so they do not hatch, even uh, if something happens to them while I deploy them in the field. And I put around, uh, right now my protocol is 13 or so egg masses per farm. I'll give you one that you can take a look around. They're pretty tiny. And I put them on the underside of leaves, give them a few days, and come back to see if any wasps have been lured and have actually all deposited the eggs. Instead of the light green color that characterizes the uh, fresh and healthy uh, sting bug eggs, we tend to see a, a darker color. So usually in around three to four weeks, we will see those hatch. Uh, none had, had hatched so, uh, as of yet, but uh, we hope to, to identify parasitoid wasps and hope to find the samurai wasp among them. And yeah, I'll take any questions.